Okay, you guys, what is up? The King of Lightning is here today to do Hunter x Hunter 2011 episode 113 review. That is 113 of Hunter x Hunter. Now, this one right here. Oh, man. I mean, for, again, when it comes to the animation, I thought it was good. It, it was slow, but it was good. When it came to the overall, well, the pacing was slow. The animation was good. When it came to the narration, I'm loving it, man. I really am. I think it's a phenomenal part of the episode. It's fantastic. It ties in everything so nice, like a bow, and it's just beautiful. It just looks very nice overall. It just feels a lot better. It's smoother with the narration as one of the primary focuses of the anime right now. It's very, very good. When it comes to the episode itself, there are three main focuses. There is Shoot Mak Maho. Love that name, Mak Maho. There's Shoot, there's Killua, and there's Poof. Those are the three main things. Now, there are, now there's some side stuff going on here. Well, I guess the whole Wolfen and the Chitu and the Bro Val, I forgot his name, the crab guy. That is side stuff pretty much for now. Or when it came to the episode, it wasn't as important or it wasn't as highlighted as the other three parts. When it came to going at the end, you know, we have the king and he's walking out. And then we have Zeno and we have Nutero and they're walking right next to the king right behind him because they're going to the battleground location. And. We have Nitero looks over, he sees Gone. Of course, Gone's like a shadowy figure with like super short shorts and shit, but whatever. And he's just standing there. Nitero's like, the guy you want, he's riding there. He's riding there. And Gone starts to power up because he's ready for a fight. He's ready to go. A 1 2, a 1 2. He's ready to go. So, the thing about it is that that was also that was a minuscule part of the episode in and of itself. And even the stuff with um, Morel and him, you know, giving his final, you know, thumbs up to Knuckle and Shoot. Like, after we're done with this, we're going to drink ourselves silly. Now, the main parts of the episode were, again, these three. It was Shoot, it was Killua, and it was Poof. So let me start with Poof. Because Poof was weird. Poof was super weird. This guy's mind is so deep within the realm of fantasy, where he, when he got to the area where the king should have been, he apparently knew that the king was at the uh, Komugi's. He knew that he was there, seeing Komugi. But in his mind, he thought that, no, that, 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 that's bullshit. Because he is the almighty king. Why should a king of his stature, why should a king of his magnificence, Go and make small talk, go out of his way to see a mere human. It is incomprehensible. But he did it anyway, and he knew that. And he's just sitting there. Oh, I'm sorry, nothing. He's just standing there, and he is like floating around and shit, just in the in the realms of fantasy. And there was one part where he was doing like a high kick, like his leg, like, like he was a ballerina. And like his leg was straight up like mad high. Like almost 90 degrees, and his toe was pointed out. I'm like, yo, like this is weird. Like this guy is massively weird. This guy, he's too deep in the fantasy, right? Like this guy, <laughs> like what is it called, man? Oh, like what? those dudes, man. I forgot the exact term, but it's those cool. It's those dudes who role play, like, and like they go in like the woods and shit. <laughs> like they role play. Fuck. LARPers, thank you, LARPing, LARP- HA <laughs> My bro just told me it was LARPing, man. LARPing, funny, funny, he's like one of those guys, right? And, and, and if you're a LARPer, then have that, okay? Just, just do you. But, this guy is so deep in the realm of fantasy where he couldn't focus for seconds on end. And by the time he actually regained focus, Mora was already right there. He was already there with the smoke surrounding him. So that to me, I just found absolutely hilarious. Like, 
he needs to start focusing. Shao Poof, he, he's, he's too... I mean, right now he just hates himself and he hates the fact that the king is going to see a mere pathetic human. But it's like, bro, keep your mind in reality. Like, wake, wake the fuck up. Someone has to smack it, man. Wake up! Ugh! Because he's just too deep. But they spent like five, ten minutes on that. Like, I'm, <laughs> it was insane. Of just him twirling around and thinking about all the possibilities and coming to the realization that in his own mind, he is a bad royal guard. Not because he didn't know where the king was, but because he knew where the king was, but he, but he didn't go there. So, again, when it comes to Poof, he's on a mind of his own. Just Poof. Now, when it comes to Shoot, this was funny. This was real funny. Because Shoot got, like, massively cocky. <laughs> Shoot for no reason. <laughs> he, like, he has, like, this weird, like, side thing. Like, I don't know what it is exactly, but you know, like, how, like his getup is, like, this, like, weird side thing that like, covers his face pretty much from, like, the right-hand side of his body. He had no reason to do it. But, like, he was... He took it and he wrapped it around like his hairpiece, and it's covering his right eye. And he's looking at Yupi, he just has a big ass smirk on his face. He's all smiles, like, ha, ha, ha. and Yupi's like, "Yo, I'm gonna fucking rip you apart, dude. I'm gonna kill you. I'm gonna rip out your damn guts. I wanna skull fuck you. All right, I'm gonna drink from your bones because right now he's just pissed, and because he he keeps on getting hit." by Knuckle, but he can't sense Knuckle because Knuckle has the, uh, he has the God's Accomplice because Meliron is there, attached to him, or holding him. And when it comes to Morel, Morel had to set up like a decoy thing with his own pipe in order to get past Yupi, and then Shoot and Yupi go at it for like a few seconds, and Shoot's actually doing like a very good job. Within the, with, I mean, even though his leg is busted, He's able to actually, because his leg is like really busted, like it's like, dude, like, his leg is surgery and rehab for fucking years, if I happen to an actual person, for damn years. But the thing here is that when it came to this disability, he was able to make, he was able to actually create like a new skill, which is now apparently his ultimate technique, his, uh, what they call it, his Odi. So uh, he's standing on his own fist. And he has the two fish ring flying around, and Yuppie's blocking him, and he's blitzing in the air. So he's far more mobile now than he was. Far more mobile. So he so he came up with a very nice skill at the end of the day. A very nice skill. I mean, it's it's wonderful. I mean, is it an Ogi? I'm not sure. If it's, I don't know if I'd go so far as to say Ogi, but but it's still pretty damn good. And he's able to give Marla's pipe back. But the fact that shoot. After just seeing Gon just completely changes, goes to a 180, and all of a sudden he's like, "Yo, I got this, man!" And he ties the shit. To the <laughs> yo, you could tell you were just mad. He was like, "Yo, you mad, bro? Like, fuck yeah, I'm real anger management, man, bro. You can't stop me right now with my rage." So like, that was good. That was good. That was very good. I like the car a lot. The poof part was weird, but that was actually funny and good. And when it came to the last part, the, the last main focus point, Killua. <sighs> the fact that Killua, even though his mind was in shambles, was able to accurately, precisely take out two of the fodder chimera ants. And the way he took them out, that was very nice animation. Because it was like the yo yo went right through them, like butter through a hot knife. And I'm sorry, vice versa. Like a hot knife through butter. There we go. And the shock wave came after the initial contact. And their heads just blew up. I'm like, yo, that was swift. In fact, there was no need for him to go about the part of making like his claws and piercing them. There was no need for that. Their heads were already blown up. There was no need for that, but he did anyway. And the fact that he did this subconsciously. Because his mind was a wreck, but his body knew what to do. He's been training for so long where his body knew the routine. It knew what to do without any signals or without, and like, without a direct you know, message from the brain, hence subconsciously. 
and the fact that he took them out. And like there was like a two, three minute stare off between him and Ricardo. And it's like the OST's playing da 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 and it's just like <sighs> Like yeah, I owe you one buddy. And in that second, he comes to his senses and goes back to where he belongs, to where Gon is. That whole entire part I found had like a lot of weight when it came to the reinforcement of the friendship between Ikargo and Killua. Even though it was like a one second deal, less than that probably. <laughs> less than that. Because all this is taking place within like, a, within like a few damn seconds. Like seriously, all of this, a few seconds this is happening. The fact is that in this situation where his mind wasn't in the right place, where he was so where he wasn't focused on what on what he just did. He was shocked what he just did, and he wasn't thinking properly. Ikargo, with this one sentence, is able to bring him back to his senses, Killua, so he can return back to the mission. So there is some reinforcement in their friendship. Not only that, but the fact that, again, like the fact that Killua was able to see the two camera ants in the corner of his eye, and he knew what he was doing subconsciously, but the fact that Killua had spent all that time beforehand complaining and saying how we gotta stick to the plan, we gotta stick to the plan, despite the fact that the plan may go awry, we gotta try and keep up, and we, we gotta try and stick with the plan, the fact is that he himself goes against his previous notions and to protect his friend, and again, also consciously, to protect his friend, his friend Cargo, he basically takes up these two Chimera ants, because Ikargo, if he were to actually, you know, go to the Chimera Ants, his cover would have been blown. Now, with Wolfen, it, we are not too sure where that goes exactly, because Wolfen believes that Flutter, or Ikargo, is following Leo's orders. So, he doesn't know that, well, he has an idea that maybe the humans have teamed up with Ikargo and, and, uh, or Leo, but he doesn't know the exact situation, obviously. But it was really nice to see how things panned out there. And the narration actually really helped too, because the narration was commenting the entire time about what Killua was doing. Because Killua, in his own mind, he's like, what the hell am I doing? But his, his body just knew what to do instinctively, and he just did it. So that was very nice. Very, very nice. And again, the, narr the, the narration is telling you exactly what's happening. So it's, it's wonderful. This episode of Hunter x Hunter, once again, an amazing to a yo, so amazing plus, we'll leave it at that. Because it was, <sighs> amazing plus, I think is good, or I'll probably leave that amazing, because I did like it a lot. I mean, even though it was slow, when it, because I don't really, I don't really, I don't really know how to explain it, but I felt like the animation at some point was slow. I mean, like, the pacing was slow. Therefore, some parts of the animation were slow. Like, for example, when it came to the cargo and the Killua, like, crossing each other part, and, like, they're both in, like, mid-air, like, running. Da, 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 da. You're like, okay, all right. So, like, that part, slow. It was, like, 30 seconds of that. You're like, bro, how long has it been there? But still, it was still good overall because the way it was directed was very good. It was just directed very good, so even though it was slow in a lot of parts, it was appropriately slow. You feel me? It was appropriately slow. So, that being said, overall, the episode, I'm going to give it a rating of Amazing Plus. Not exactly Yo, but Amazing Plus, close, as close as you can get to Yo. And I'll leave it at that to King Lightning. Be sure to, of course, rate the comment. <laughs> rate the comment! <laughs> rate the comment! Whoa! Rate the video! Comment! And subscribe, as always. Hopefully, my copyright strike goes away, because it, it will at some point, because the Sony music, they ain't saying shit, obviously. Oh, it's a Sony music. Ah! Anyway, hopefully that, that, hopefully that goes away real soon, so I can do the actual Hunter x Hunter live stream. And once it, once it does, once the copyright strike is gone, we're doing the Hunter x Hunter live stream. Like the day, like the day after, because obviously I need to have one day of informing the people, the fans, and then we'll go on from there. So, I'm done. I will see you guys later. Be sure to, of course, I'll say one more time, rate the video, comment, and subscribe as always. Peace! Have a nice day.